everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim, the famous preacher from Prayer. She's probably the most famous preacher in Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks. <laughs> Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks. And guess what? We're going to have a meeting at Prayers at Mountain in the Ozarks. Okay. When is This it? very month in October. Ooh, that's a fun yes. meeting. You need and, to come uh, to that. It's, we call it the Autumn Assembly. And um, it's October 29th through you November 3rd. That. Good. And you and Ken will be there. I will be there. I've never missed And ever. you know what we're going to do this year? <gasps> I've told Ken, and I hope he remembers. I'll bet he does, but i got to tell him again. Um, of course he does. But uh, we're going to have a Native American meeting right after that. We had one before. You remember that? We yeah. had those 35 nations. Yeah. And they came. You want me to wear my leather dress? Yeah. And uh, you said one night when we were there in that meeting, we had it before with 35 nations. You said, I think I'm the only white woman in here. <laughs> it was the truth. <laughs> But I survived. Oh, they come. They bring their, uh, they bring their, their all their paraphernalia, their clothes. They have a march of the nations, and this year they've got some outstanding pre uh, teachers and preachers from among the natives. Well, interesting. And music, and uh, so that's going to be in our tent. You know, we have a tent meeting out there I at know. Prayer Mountain. We always that's end on Monday exciting. in a tent meeting, and uh, so we said we've got the tent already, and the natives were wanting to come back to Prayer Mountain for a meeting. So they're just coming. So after they're coming that. after that. And Brother Copeland, he's a Native American. He's a Cherokee, mm -hmm. and so he'll probably be the first speaker. So they'll be there after the other meeting. After the other meeting is over. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So the, they'll start uh, uh, November fourth. Okay. So Good. we'll be very, very glad to to have everyone come who would That's like to great. come. That'll be we're not fun. closing off white folks. They just have to sit in the back. Oh, heck. Well, <laughs> some of us will sit in the back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to have a good day today with Billy Brim. She's here from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks. And we're going to be watching. And we're she's, watching. She's a watcher. She'll tell us what's going we're on. We're continuing to watch uh, because Jesus said he's coming. And he said everybody who watches, he told us always to watch for that. Mm -hmm. And we've been using for our key scripture, uh, Luke 21, 29 beginning there when his uh, followers had asked him, what will be the sign of your coming? And that word coming in Matthew is parousia, which means coming as a king or an emperor to set up your, your kingdom. So he's going to set up a visible kingdom on the earth at his second coming. Uh, all history is, is centered around two major events, the first coming of the Lord and the second coming Praise of the Lord. Praise God. And we're right up against the second coming oh, of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And so we're watching. We're watching for him. He didn't want us to be asleep. He told us That's to watch. Right. That's right. So here we're going to read what he said in Luke 21, 29. Behold the fig tree. That's Israel. We've gone over that in detail last week. To get most out of this, you'll need to see what's on last week. Behold the fig tree. That's Israel. And all the trees. Those are the nations of prophecy. The ones that the prophets told us what would be happening with them in the last days. Some of those are, I tell you right on the front burner right now, is Iran and Persia. That's one of the nations. That's, it's called Elam. It's called Persia. And all the prophecies about it, we call it Iran today. And so we are watching mm. the fig tree Israel. We're watching all the nations of prophecy. And it says, when they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. That's the time when the crop comes in and the judgments come. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God, the earthly kingdom he's talking about, is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation, the generation that saw the fig tree bud, the generation that saw the nations come into the prophetic place, shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Yeah, that That's would us. be us, That would right? be us. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not mm. pass away. That's Take heed to exciting. yourselves. I said, any time your hearts be overcharged with partying and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day comes upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall oh, come to pass. Oh, yes, Lord, grant it. Stand before the Son of Man. And you can't escape. If you're a part of the body of Christ and, and glorification is awaiting you, you will escape and you will, you're not appointed under wrath. And that's all in our Revelation teaching, which you can get from us. And we've taught it here. Now, um, I wanted to read you Brother Copeland's letter. We started with this 
last week. And um, when I came home, I had been to Israel for an extended amount of time. And so I read this letter late when I was going through all my mail. And I was just taken back by it. He wrote on the front of it, what in the world is happening? (laughs) And man, did that ever catch my eye, especially just home from Israel. He says, what in the world is happening? Nations are on the move against other nations. Strange Hmm. and, get this, never before heard of things, never before heard of things are taking place. The nations are being scrambled around to fulfill the scripture concerning the last days. These things, both large and small, will continue to escalate until all things according to the word of God come to pass. We just read that, until all things come to pass. A better and far more important question is, what in the kingdom of God is happening? The same thing, signs and wonders and never before heard of things. And then he goes on to talk about, if so, what then? What do you do about it? And so he encourages the people, me, you, his partners, uh, to be strong in the word of God, number one and the faith that is a result of it. And then to uh, pray in the Spirit. He said, wake up and stay awake. You are a soldier in the army of the Lord. Your faith is important to the whole body of Christ, not to just you and your family. Every time you pray in the Spirit, He can and does use you and me to pray about things in the kingdom we are not aware of, things we know nothing about. But He knows, and our spirit man knows, And our minds don't need to know for us to be effective. Oh, what good counsel that is. Mm -hmm. So we went into some detail earlier on about praying in tongues and exactly what that does. And that's how we can pray about things. And so we have entitled this Watching in the End Days. End of days. That's what the Bible calls it, the end of days. And we've been watching the fig tree, watching Israel, because Jesus told us to. And we're going to watch the nations later on in the week. And, but now we're going to start with watching the heavens for signs. Mm, that because sounds interesting. we're about to have a sign in the heavens this very Wednesday. Really? Yes. So uh, in 2009 or so, I just happened to watch J.R. Churches. He was a preacher out of Oklahoma City. And uh, he had a program, television program called Prophecy in the News. Now, I knew of J.R. Church. I'd read some things about him. He always looked at the Psalms for prophecies. But I had not watched his television program over, you could count it on the fingers of one hand. But I happened to have it on. And there was a pastor, Mark Biltz, from the Northwest. And he was sharing his then very new discovery. He had made this discovery in 2008. He had discovered that a few rare blood moon tetrads would occur and had occurred on what is known as what people call the Jewish feast dates. Actually, it's dates on God's calendar. And he saw that when these tetrads happened, we were about to have another one, and that there were some in the past which had happened on the very dates of the, of the feast, Passover, and tabernacles. And that, that when they happened, It was at a time of a world-changing event, also took place at the same time, and that world-changing event was associated with Israel. Now, um, the Lord just recently said to me, I want you to notice how that heavenly bodies are connected to Israel. So then he showed me these things, these places. And the first one was Joseph in Genesis 37 and verse 9. You remember the story of Joseph and his brothers? And he dreamed some dreams that made his brothers very jealous of him. The first one he dreamed was they were all out in the field and he yeah. saw the sheaves of wheat and he saw these sheaves of wheat bowed down to him and he knew they were his brothers and he told his brothers that they bowed down to him. But then he dreamed another dream. This is the one we want to look at. The Lord pointed out to me. Genesis 37, 9. And he dreamed yet another dream. And behold, and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, 
and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. He told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father, Jacob, rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? Now, Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so Joseph sees the father as the sun, the mother as the moon, and then he sees the 11 stars bowing down to him, who's star number 12. Now, the Lord was... And that set, didn't go over so No, big. it didn't go over well. It got him thrown into a pit. And you can read the story in Genesis. It's very exciting. But this is the beginning of the nation of Israel. These 12 tribes are the nation of Israel. We've had a wonderful production of Joseph put on in Branson. And I, I saw it several times. And when I saw it, I thought... Satan's been trying to wipe out the Jews from before they started. And he tried to do it with strife among those brethren, those 12 brethren. But what we want to just point out today is the sun, the moon, and the stars had to do with Israel. Now, over in Revelation chapter 12, this is what the Lord said to me just a couple weeks ago. I want you to notice that heavenly bodies have to do with Israel. So this is uh, uh, Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And verse 5, She brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to heaven and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness. This woman is Israel, and the man-child is the Messiah. And the dragon waiting for him is Satan. But Jesus was caught up to heaven, of course, after his death, burial, and resurrection. And uh, then the Lord is protecting Israel, even in the last days and in the, in the time of the tribulation. But we see here Israel again is depicted, and the woman as the sun, the moon, and the stars. So the Lord wanted me to see, because we're watching heavenly signs, that heavenly bodies are connected to Israel. And then he took me, just last week or so, over to this. I knew all these scriptures, so it didn't take him long to do it. He just showed them to me like blank, 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 you know, because I, I read them a lot. He took me over to Jeremiah chapter 31. And last week I suggested to you, that as we watch Israel, that you read uh, Jeremiah 30 and 31 to give you God's plan for Israel. It's all just succinctly in there. And in uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, the end of verse 34 says concerning Israel, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. There's a day coming when there will be a national forgiving and wiping away of all the sin of Israel. Verse 35, Thus saith the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea when the waves thereof roar. Jehovah of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Jehovah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So he was talking to me about, because you know I've been talking about these four blood moon a tetrad that's coming up and the ones that were in the past. And uh, I've heard people like Mark Bill says, they say, oh, we don't know about that, you know. Well, that's the truth. They don't know about that. But in encouraging me to go ahead and talk about it, um, he said, I want to show you that when you watch Israel, I have tied the heavenly bodies to her. They are, they are a place, I give signs concerning her. Mm -hmm. And she, Israel's God's time clock not the church, Israel. The whole world is to watch his promises to Israel 
as a time clock for when he's coming again. I remember one time when we were going into Soviet Union and we were going from Helsinki and I was out in a broad place in Helsinki one day and there was this little guy and he was at the church where we were having meetings and I knew he was, he could have been a half bubble off, you know, but he had on a jeans jacket. Maybe God can use those folks sometimes better than ones who know it all, probably for sure. But anyway, he had a jeans jacket on and he had sewn a handmade clock, big clock, on the back of his jeans jacket. And he had the hands almost till 12. And then he had under there sewn, Israel is God's time clock. Hmm. And ever since then, I thought, yep, that little guy knows it. They are God's time clock. They are what we watch. And he has tied them in the scriptures to the heavenly bodies so that he would give signs. We can watch Israel and watch these heavenly bodies and the signs is how they're tied to Israel. It's a key. Then another scripture the Lord gave me the other day was uh, Psalm 104. And in Psalm 104, verse 19, he appointed the moon for Moeds. Moed is a Hebrew word that means an appointed time, a fixed time. God has a calendar. We're going to look at it in relationship to these heavenly bodies and the signs in them. God has a calendar, and that calendar each month is marked by a new moon. And God tells them certain things you have to do on the 10th day, the 15th day. If you get the first day wrong, you can't get any other days right. So he appoints the moon to mark his moeds. And they didn't have in the early days, they didn't have calendars like we do that tells you this is the first of the month or this is the new moon. Yeah. They had to go out and observe and watch. And so the Sanhedrin would appoint uh, watchers and they would watch that new moon come in and then they would send word all around for people who didn't live close by Jerusalem because it counted at Jerusalem. And so he appointed the moon for moeds. Now, the Israelites are going to be the keepers of his calendar. It's God's calendar, but they're going to keep it. Uh, they're the keepers of time as well as the witnesses of time. And they've got to watch that moon for the Moeds on God's calendar. So um, I saw then that to go right on teaching, right on talking about these things, and uh, as I started off this program, I told you that in 2009, I think it was, I was watching J.R. Church, and he had this pastor on. And this pastor was Mark Biltz. He wrote this book, Blood Moons. And he had made a discovery. And uh, I'm going to read you what he says, because he said people have misunderstood some of the things he said, but I'm going to read you just what he said. In 2008, something radical happened. In March of that year, this is Mark Biltz talking, I saw on the internet an incredible total lunar eclipse over the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. I had read all the Bible verses in Isaiah, Joel, the Gospels, and Revelation where the text talks about the moon turning to blood and the sun to sackcloth. I began to ponder the possibilities of tying, maybe they were talking about eclipses mentioned in the Bible, uh, to the possible coming of the Messiah. Because I love science and astronomy, I decided to look into the future occurrences of eclipses. I remembered that NASA has a list of eclipses that covers 5,000 years. So I went to the website to see what interesting observations I could find. I noticed that there were four total lunar eclipses in a row for 2014 and 2015. I noted their dates on our calendar. Actually, he found what is called a tetrad. A, a tetrad is four total lunar eclipses with no other eclipses in between them and their regular intervals. After visiting NASA's website, I suddenly began waking up around 4 a.m. for several days in a row. Unable to go back to sleep, I would get up and go into the closet to pray for an hour or so. One morning as I was praying, a thought popped into my head. Why don't I compare the dates of the eclipses on the NASA website to the dates on the biblical calendar? When I did, I was shocked to find that all four eclipses over two years would fall on the biblical holidays of Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Fast Passover 2014, 
and Feast of Tabernacles 2014, Passover 2015, Feast of Tabernacles 2015. I just about jumped out of my skin. <laughs> Immediately I ran to my computer and pulled up NASA's website to look up other times when there have been four consecutive blood moons, which are total lunar eclipses where the blood appears, where the moon appears blood red. NASA calls four total blood moons in a row a tetrad, and they list their occurrences. I noticed there weren't any in the 1600s, 1700s, or even the 1800s. The last time there was a tetrad was in the 1900s, and to my amazement, they also fell on the feasts of Passover and Tabernacles. When I noticed the years these phenomena occurred, my mind began reeling. The last two times there were four blood moons in a row happened first right after Israel became a nation in 1948. They actually happened in 1949. And then again when Israel retook Jerusalem in 1967. I started doing a hallelujah dance. It was as if I had just found treasure buried in the sand. My heart was racing 100 miles an hour as all those key scriptures about the signs in the heavens, God's feast dates, and the timing on the biblical calendar flooded my mind. This led me to an incredible journey of discovery as I began link linking the feast dates, actually those are called the Moeds, in the Bible with the signs in the heavens to when they fall on the biblical calendar. God said in Genesis 1.14 that He created the sun and moon and stars for signals on His Moeds, His feast dates. Now I had a key to unlocking the code. Wow. And that's where we're going to begin tomorrow. Ooh, you where know God tells us specifically that the sun, the moon, and the stars are signs wow. and markers. Wow. And one's coming up on Wednesday of this week. You don't want to miss this. Don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. Billy, that's so extremely interesting. Is wow. It now? Yeah. Whew, you get us all excited. Don't go away. Billy and I are going to be right back and we're going to continue this teaching. She's going to continue teaching me and you all week long on this subject. No telling what we'll learn. We'll be right back. When all this starts to happen, up on your feet, stand tall with your heads high. Help is on the way. Luke 21, 28. You can know the signs of the times and understand what's going on in the world around you. Watching in the end of days package will focus your attention on faith, not fear, and what God's word says about the future. This exciting set of resources includes Signs of the Last Days, an end times update teaching series and study guide by Billy Brim, and Blood Moons, decoding the imminent heavenly signs by Mark Biltz. These timely teachings will help you understand the divine link between prophecy, heavenly signs, and historical events, and what they mean to us today. Learn how to watch for God's appointed times revealed in the heavens and the seasons represented on God's calendar. Keep your eyes on the truth. Be equipped for the future. Look forward to the glorious days ahead of God's end time. You can know the signs of the times. Order the Watching in the End of Days package on CD or DVD and enjoy a special savings of 20%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Understand the divine link between the prophecy, heavenly signs, historical events, and when they intersect. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. I'm going to let Billy tell you about our package, Watching in the End of Days. You're going to want to get it. When you get, you're going to get stirred up about this. Yeah, I have a book here uh, by Mark Biltz, and he's the one that sort of discovered all this that now, you know, the rest of us have kind of watching what he discovered. You may or may not agree with everything in it, but the fact is these blood moons are coming, and he, he's very good about it with his research in here. And uh, he doesn't try to convince you that he's a prophet or anything. In fact, I heard him speak uh, alive one time at CUFI, and he said, I don't know everything about this. And he said, and, and people are going to differ about it, but he said, whatever your theological pipe is, put this in it and smoke it. 
So that's why we give it to you. You might draw something out of it different than he does. Now, what I drew out of it and other things, we, uh, Terry and George Pearson's wonderful church, EMIC, they invited me to come in March uh, and, and do a Signs of the end, end of Days. And it just came off so well. So we're offering those DVDs and the handbook we passed out at the same time. Good, good. Isn't that exciting? Ooh, you don't want to miss any of these. We're going to be, we, as in Billy, is going to be talking about this all week. I'm going to be listening. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to pray for you today. Father, we just pray for all the people right now. We thank you that every day is healing day with you, and we command people to be healed in Jesus' name and to receive deliverance from sickness, disease, torment, fear. We make if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, receive him as your savior. And what happens? You get born over again. That's your opportunity to start over. Hallelujah. Except this time, you're going to have strength in your spirit. You're going to be the new creation in Christ Hallelujah. Jesus, the Bible talks about. So join us tomorrow. And for more, Billy's going to keep sharing on this subject. Billy and I will be back then, and we are reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith. This week's Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Receive God's great grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. We're created in the image and likeness of God. Amen. We have the God-given ability to think like Him, talk like Him, see like Him, hear like Him, and get His results. Amen. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event, the 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2015 Branson Victory Campaign, February 26th through 28th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2015 Southwest Believers Convention, June 29th through July 4th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information, go to the KCM website, 